So if you look at this dollar CAD, we have an old low here and price has rallied up. There is now engineered liquidity. Now what does that mean? That means that the market has turned on a dime here and rallied higher. I see this as a liquidity pool of sell side orders. So I want you to think about that low with the target or bullseye of the price wanting to go down to that level to attack the liquidity that rests below that low. Now, it may take months before it gets to this low, but if it gets to this low, this is what I want you to start looking at. And it doesn't only work on daily charts. This works on hourly charts. It works on four hour charts. It works on weekly charts. Okay, so it's important that you know that this liquidity idea I'm teaching you here is just part of the framework. But we can see eventually on the 9th of November, price trades down and goes below that low. This is an important event. When this day runs below this low, it's a crucial event algorithmically because what it's doing is it's going into a pool of liquidity. Now, we don't know with any absolute assurity that what I'm gonna outline here is gonna unfold, but I'm gonna give you the things you'd look for to build confidence that it is likely to. And you'll see by going through your own charts how fast you can see these scenarios developing. So let's go over to the hourly chart now. All right, so here is the hourly dollar CAD chart. You should be able to see this high and this low as a important price range. Now, what makes it important? It's the most dominant price range in this portion of price action. So whenever I'm looking at price, I look for clear discernible price ranges. When the range is clearly defined, as you can see here, what I do is I wanna look for reference points based on measurements that are very generic. Okay, so in other words, I wanna know what this high is here on this candle, and I wanna know what the low of this candle is. Now, we're looking at this with the expectation that we're anticipating a run below that, but we don't know if it's gonna continue. We wait for something to occur, which I'll outline here, and then once it happens, it gives us framework for short-term bias and where the draw on liquidity is gonna be in an opposing order. In other words, we see a, an attack on sell side liquidity with this day here. If something occurs, as I'll outline, that will be your green light to anticipate opposing buy side liquidity to be taken. Okay, so the concept I'm showing you here is purge and revert. When we look at liquidity, you wanna be able to look at it on the basis of daily highs and lows. Now, when you look at daily highs and lows, you can add period separators to your chart like tradingview.com allows you to do. I don't do it like this, okay? So what I do is I look at the midnight to midnight time frame, and I delineate my session breaks like that. So it'll look like this, okay? So all of my vertical lines here are midnight to midnight New York time. Once this low, which is highlighted with this line here, that's that old daily low. And we see that run below the old daily low here. That is a purging of liquidity. Now, once this purge occurs, we wanna see the day of that purge, we wanna start looking backwards, okay? I use a three-day range of look back, okay? If you look for the last three days, you'll have all the liquidity pools you need to make money. You'll have all the liquidity pools to target for your trades. You'll have all the liquidity pools that you could use for trade entries. And you don't need anything other than that. You don't need to have a IPTA 20-day look back period. You don't need to have a 60-day. You don't need to have a 40-day. You don't need to look back on your weekly charts and see how many times something hit a level 14 different times to have any faith in it. The market does not look back 20 years ago, okay? It looks at predetermined price levels, and that's the reason why the algorithms operate the way they do. So the day of the purging, in other words, the day it runs below that old daily low, when that happens, we count that as day one, okay? That's day one of that event of purging. We wait to see if it goes higher and reverts, not reverses, okay? I'm not saying reversal, I'm saying revert. What is it reverting to? It's reverting to buy side. So it draws to sell side liquidity and that's counted as day one. That is day one, day two, day three. That's our look back on the day of liquidity purge. So the day it occurs, you look back three days. Now, inside the range prior to the liquidity purge, you gotta look back and see where is that range. Now, you could have looked at this, say if you're looking at a 15 minute chart, maybe you would have seen it as this high to this low, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You would be just using five minute charts to get the same premise I'm showing you here on an hourly chart. 
It's all scalable, folks. And this is an example of engineered liquidity. Engineered liquidity is where they run down, take those sellers out of the marketplace. For what purpose? It allows individuals that are on the smart money side of things, informed traders, okay, large institutional traders, bank traders, and they will use that liquidity to be a counterparty to their buying. And if we see an old daily low taken, that is a significant pool of liquidity. There's lots of orders below an old low. If price runs below an old low, that sell side liquidity has been purged only if we start to move away from it. Now, it might be a sweep on stops and then it continues higher. But if it runs below it and then goes back above a specific level, what level would that be? Well, we want to look at the day that it occurs and it runs the liquidity out. So this day here, I've annotated the daily high. If that high is traded to and through, that is a market structure break only on the basis of a liquidity purge. Now, it does not mean it's 100% successful. It just means that from an algorithmic standpoint, if we're looking at logical steps of, of processes, we look for this. If this occurs, then we look for this. If that occurs, then we look for this. And if that occurs, we look for that. So it's a matter of looking at a recipe for a model that would be unfolding dynamically. So if this day's high, when it takes the liquidity out, is broken on the upside here, I don't need it to close above it because the narrative is it ran below an old low for liquidity. If it's going to go higher, the algorithm will start its macro, and macro is a short order of processes that begin and go step by step. And it's like a small little algorithm in a sense. And the large algorithm that creates and controls price action it's just a bunch of smaller little algorithms that tie together. And it's very complex, obviously, but just know that you can reduce it to something as simple as what I'm showing you here. It may not seem simple right now, but I need you to understand there's certain things that are at play here that cause these things, okay, that occur. So the run below the liquidity, if that day's high is broken, we see it here, then we can start looking for buy side liquidity for the algorithm to revert to. Here's the previous day's high. That's all these little blind segments are. I'm looking at the daily high that is between 12 and 12 midnight each day. So this day's liquidity is tape, you know, taken out, but it's a break in market structure on the basis and narrative that we've taken sell side liquidity out. So now once it does this, where do we anticipate price going to? Well, you first have to revert back to this high and this low. So we're looking at how much we're going to retrace from this low into this high it may not ever get back to that high and then here's the thing you don't need to have it go there but you need to know where the midpoint is and that's what this level is here so that's basically equilibrium between the high and the low of that obvious range now the algorithm knows this range high and it knows the low it forms here the midpoint is equilibrium so what we're doing is we want to look at three days back as far as in terms of time the liquidity above the daily highs as far back as day three and the filter is the midpoint or equilibrium of the range that's traded in prior to the liquidity being purged you can use these ideas to frame the logic on holding long positions or partials to get to this level and then day three in this case here so what do i mean by that we have the high the low the logic behind the run on stops on the sell side liquidity raid Okay, so this is purged if we get a run above the day of the purging. And then we start looking at the previous day's highs. And above that is going to be liquidity until we get to the 50% level of the range. Once it does that, we are in an iffy. Like it, it might not continue going higher. It could, but it might not. But if we have day three still in close contention with this level, in other words, it's not that far above it and it's not a lot of range in terms of where the equilibrium is and where the previous day or day three's high would be, that buy side liquidity would be potentially attacked. So we can see each day we had the break above the old high here. Market structure is broken. So now we're thinking buy side liquidity is going to be the next draw. That means your bias on a short term is look for this high to be tapped and maybe this one. We don't need it to go all the way back up here. Okay. We don't need it to go all the way back up to the last up close candle, which is a bearish order block. Okay, you're looking at high probability. This is what this is. High probability short term trading. So if we see that they're all on buy side liquidity is the context that the algorithm is going to be operating under. They've already done the damage by going down. 
So each day after this day, you are looking for this pool of liquidity to be traded to and this pool of liquidity to be traded to. And once it does that, high probability goes away. It changes, okay? So the algorithm goes into a different mode of delivery. It can become a deeper retracement or it could accelerate into that high. This high, you know, being broken of this creates the market structure shift. Buy side liquidity here, if we draw that out in time, and we're gonna look at the 11th of November, and we're gonna look at that on a 15 minute chart. So let's drop down to the 15 minute time frame and look at this here and how it attacks these blue levels. All right, so here is the 15 minute time frame of that dollar CAD, and we can see the short little lines are always gonna be individual daily highs. The elongated blue lines are gonna be those old liquidity pools that we're looking for price to trade up into. So on the 11th, we have price trading in here. And again, all I'm annotating here is this candle's high, which makes that high. We don't use the, the midnight high. When we're looking at all this data here, if this midnight candle makes a higher high, we don't call the 11th daily high that one because it's really technically the 12th. So we're you're using only the data that makes the individual day prior to midnight in New York time. So the highest high and the lowest low, that's what we're looking for. But as soon as we get to midnight, everything starts new. That's a new range for the day. So we have equilibrium here. So we know the price could jump to that or at least this level here. And this level is the initial one because it's below equilibrium and it's the old liquidity pool on day two. Look at how price trades back down in to this run here. Isn't this an optimal trade entry? Here's your swing low. All right, so here is the Fibonacci late on that price swing. I'm using the bodies of the candles. Again, not using the wicks and the tails because the bulk of the volume is in the bodies. So it's gonna give you a pure read on where the buy signal is gonna be. All right, it doesn't mean that you can't use the wicks and the tails. It just means when I'm looking for optimal trade entry, I prefer to use the bodies of the candles because it will give you a pure read on the entry. If I'm looking at ranges, when I'm looking at finding equilibrium, I will use the, the wicks and the tails. So we have the optimal trade entry in here, it trades down to that, and we have a standard deviation of negative one half, and it overlaps basically with that old liquidity pool. And then we have it trading up to equilibrium here at negative one. We have negative two just above the old liquidity pool, and we have negative 2.5, which is with this new liquidity pool on Thursday before Friday's trading. And the market trades there on Friday. And again, we have price trading down initially, creating a Judas swing. What's the context? We're looking for price to revert back to buy side liquidity because it's already done its job over here, running that old daily low. So each day we're looking for clues if it's going to go to the buy side liquidity. Each day it's gonna be reaching for a specific level of liquidity. The market's gonna go where there is counterparty, period. And if there isn't enough counterparty there, the market will create it, it'll engineer it. It'll run up, blow out equal highs. It'll blow out equal lows and it'll change sentiment on the basis of that event. Here we have the market trading above the equilibrium, trading to an old liquidity pool and trades back down. Now, we still have time in the week and it can still continue, but isn't this an optimal trade entry as well? And a breaker. We have a low, a high, a lower low use the highest up close candle. So when the market trades down into that, that's your bullish breaker and your order block, down close candle before this displacement, optimal trade entry. We get above Thursday's liquidity pool here, not by much, but we have a standard deviation of negative one that with these equal highs here or relative equal highs, we could potentially see it try to get up there and, and snag that. I'm not saying it will because we're above equilibrium, but that is how I would look at it. Now, if this was say, Tuesday, Wednesday, and we were still in an active trading week, then I would still be hunting longs and I would look for standard deviation of negative one or negative one and a half because it would be expanding above the relative equal highs and I would look for it for like 10, 20, 30 pips. So let's go back in closing, take everything off and go to a daily chart. The market has consolidated for a long period of time in here and we have this old low. This old low, if it runs below that, even if it will go lower, all we're doing is looking at short-term liquidity to frame short-term intraday trades. So I framed it on the basis of higher time frame liquidity pools, which is sell side here, short-term trading logic, algorithmic principles, understanding the open float, 
where the market's going to attack a specific side of the marketplace until it gets to a specific threshold and then it becomes low probability. 